Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and welcome to part seven of my tutorial series on authentication and authorization using the Mern stack. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be going over the login and registration portion of our application. So before we get into that, I'm gonna go back to where we left off in the previous tutorial. And you can see that everything's slated to the left-hand side. So we're gonna address this issue now. And we're gonna come back here and I'm just gonna hit Control B to bring up the package explorer. We're gonna open within our public folder, index.html. And remember that we included this bootstrap style sheet. Now, the only thing we need to do is actually add a class to this root div. And we are gonna call this container. So if you've worked with Bootstrap before, you know that you put everything within a container. So if I save this and now view it, you see that it's much more presentable, okay? So very minor issue that I wanted to solve. And now what I wanna do is let's actually close the terminal. Let's open the Explorer and let's actually create our login component. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's import React. And we're gonna import two more things. So we're gonna import two hooks. We're gonna be using the use state hook. And this is gonna provide state for functional components. And we're gonna be using the use context hook. Okay. Next, we're gonna import our off service. And we're gonna be importing a helper component. I called it message. And this is just going to display the message that we get from the server. And we haven't created this component yet, but we will. Next, we're gonna import our context. And again, our context is just our global state, essentially. All right, so now let's declare our login component. And this is gonna take in props. And let's actually export this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's actually set our states. So we're gonna use the use state hook. I'm gonna say const, we're gonna have a user and we're gonna have a setter. And we're gonna say use state and we're gonna pass this object of username. I'm gonna set that to the empty string and password of empty string, okay? So that's what we're gonna initialize user to. Next, we're gonna set our message. So we're gonna have message and set message. And this time we're gonna set a state of null. And that's just to signify not to render this message component. And finally, we are gonna bring in our off context. So we're gonna say use context and we're gonna pass in our off context, okay? All right, so now let's actually do our form. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna say return and uh, let's actually start building this out. So we're gonna wrap everything within a div and we're gonna have a form here. Now this form is gonna have an on submit. So we're gonna say on submit and we're gonna pass in this function of on submit. Okay, so we haven't actually created a function called on submit, but we will. Next, let's actually give this form a title. So we're gonna give it h3 we're gonna say, please sign in, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is give a label and we're gonna use an HTML4 because we can't use the for keyword because it's reserved and this is for our username. 
and we're gonna give a class name of screen only. And again, this is a bootstrap class. I'm gonna say user name. Okay, so now let's actually have our input. So we're gonna have an input of type text. We're gonna have a name of username. We're gonna have an on change. And again, this on change is gonna take in an on change function. We haven't created this function yet. And we're gonna have a class name of form control, which is another bootstrap class. And we're gonna have a placeholder and we're just gonna say enter username. Okay, so let's actually smooth in this out. All right, so let's actually copy and paste this. We need to do this one more time. And this time, this is gonna be for the password field. So we're gonna say password. And this time we'll change this to password. Change name property to password. And we'll say enter password. Okay, so now we need a button so we could submit our form. I'm going to say button, and we're going to give it a class name of button, button large, and button primary as a button block. Next, we're going to have this of type submit. And this is just going to say login. Okay, so again, let's put this all in one line, make it easier to read so you guys can follow along. All right, so now we have our form that's done. Now what I want to do is we're going to, underneath our form, we're going to have our message component in case we have a message to display. So we're just going to say message. If message is not null, what we're gonna do is render the message component. So we haven't created this yet, but we will. And we're gonna pass message down as a prop. Otherwise, we don't wanna render anything, okay? So this looks good. So let's actually start creating these functions. So I'm going to come up here now and let's actually create our on change function because it's a lot smaller. So I'm going to say const on change and we are going to get the event object here. And what we're going to do is prevent the default action from occurring. and we are gonna set the user. So we're gonna update it to what the user is typing in. So we're gonna copy the existing properties within our user object. And next we're gonna change the field which is being targeted. So we could say e.target.name. So this is gonna be either the username or a password field. Next, we're going to set that to the actual value that the user is typing in. E.target.value. And just to double check if everything's working, let's actually print out the user. Okay. So this user is the user that we set up here. All right. So let's actually now, actually, let's check to see if this was working right now. So let's save this. And we should still have everything up and running. All right, so if I bring this here, I click login. Let's see if we have anything. Oh, okay, so we haven't hooked up the login yet. So let's actually do that right now. 
Let's go and hit control B. Let's go to our app.js and let's set up a route for this. Okay. So we're going to have a route. And we're going to give it a path of login. And we're going to have a component. And we're going to say that we want you to render the login component. Okay. So let's actually import this. So we have import login from components and login. So now let's actually test this. It says on submit is not defined, which is true. Let's actually remove that right now. So let's actually get rid of this code for now. And it says can't resolve the message and that's because we haven't created the message. And this is becoming a giant pain just to test one feature. So let's save that. And it says line 38. So let's go to there. So line 38 is here. Let's comment all this out for now. And there you go. So we finally have our login showing. Let's test to see if this is working. And there you go. You see that it is updating. All right, so the on change handler is working. So let's get rid of that. And now let's do our on submit. So let us come down here. So we'll say on submit, set that to this function on submit. And let's actually create this. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say cons on submit. We're going to get the event object. And we are going to prevent the default from happening. And once we do that, we are going to be using the off service that we coded. So I'm going to say off service dot login. And we are going to pass in the user. And this is going to return to us a promise. So then we're going to say dot then. And we should get back the parsed data. Okay. Now here, what we can do is I could say cons and we could pull out is authenticated. And we could pull out the user and the message. And this is all going to be pulled out from our data. Next, we're going to check to see if we have been authenticated. So we're going to say if authenticated. That means we need to update our global context of the user. So I'm going to say off context dot set user. And we're going to pass in the updated user. And we're going to say off context. And we're going to update the authenticated state. So I'm going to say set is authenticated. And we're going to pass in is authenticated, which should be true. Okay. Otherwise, if this is not happening, what we're going to do is we are going to set a message to the message that we received. And this is going to be an error message telling us what's wrong. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually we forgot something. So once we set the user and we set that we've been authenticated, we want to navigate to the to do's page. So in order to do this within props, we're going to have this history object and this history object is going to be from our react router. Okay, so that's where we're getting it from. And then this history object is going to have a function called push and push is just going to be where do you want to go? Okay, so we're going to pass in to do's and that's going to take us to our to do's page. Okay. So I don't think we're going to break anything except this to do's part since we don't have our to do's uh, component up yet. So. Not going to test anything yet 
because there's still a lot of things missing. But let's actually move on to actually code our message component. Okay. So we have our on submit, we have our on change. And let's save this for now. Let's hit control B. We're going to create a new component called message. Let's import react. And let's create our message component. And let's export it. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to return some JSX. So what we're going to do is re just return a div. And this is going to have a class name that we are going to generate. So basically, I want to display an error message one way and a non error message another. So we're going to create a function that's going to help us get there. So we're going to say get style and we're going to pass in the props. And we're going to set this to row of alert. Okay. Now within this div, we're actually going to output the state message from our login component. So remember, we're passing that down as a prop. So we're going to say props dot message and we just want to output the message body. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to say const get style and we're going to create this function. So we're taking in props and we're going to set a base class is what I'm going to call it. And this is going to be an alert. So this is the start of it. And we're going to have a space. So we're going to be appending bootstrap classes as we go on here. Okay. So if props dot message dot message error, that means we want to display our message a certain way. So we're going to say base class is going to be equal to base class plus alert danger. Okay, so this is going to output as a red bootstrap well. Next, we're going to say else base class. If it's not an error, we want it to display like so. Alert primary. Okay, and these are all bootstrap classes. And we are just going to return the base class, but we also want the text to be centered. So we're going to say text center. Okay. So this is a very, very short component. It's only really here just to show the message. So we could save this. And let's actually uncomment this. So our message component, we need to import it. Are we importing it? So let's uncomment that out. And let's see what we get. So let's actually test this out. So we might get some sort of error because we haven't created our to do's page, but let's see what we get. So here we have our login. Uh, I already created a username. So I'm going to say Pedro password. And that should not happen. Okay. So this is why we test stuff. The type should not be text. It should be password. So I saved that and okay. So let's open this up. I'm going to type Pedro and then the password. Sign in. See if we're getting any type of error. And saying login, login, login. Oh, this is from our on change function. So it says in promise syntax error expected token you at, and then it says that, okay. It's probably something wrong with our JSON. 
Well, that's actually output what we're getting. Say Pedro. Says line nineteen. Okay, so we're getting a parsing error. So I think what I want to do is let's actually check our server side. So let's minimize the client. Let's go to our routes folder. We'll go to our user.js and let's check out the login. So we were getting a parsing error JSON, and I think it's because of the passport. So passport sends a 401 unauthorized status code. And what we're trying to do is parse data that's not being sent. So this has something to do with our off service. So let's go back to the client. Let's go to services, off service. And you see how we wrote our is authenticated and we're checking for the unauthorized response that Passport is sending here. So what we're gonna do is just copy this from our previous tutorial. And we are gonna go to our login right here and we need to check the response. So we'll actually get rid of this and we'll have a function here. And let's paste this. And let's format this a little bit better. Let's save it. And let's see what we get. So let's bring this back here. And we are going to go to Pedro, type our password, login, and see what we get. So we're getting a printout. So now we're getting a response. We're not getting the parsed error response. So it says false username and an empty row. Okay, so maybe I didn't create the username Pedro, but that's okay. Let's actually create our register route and we'll create a user Pedro and we'll try to sign in. Okay, so we fix that error. Let's get rid of all that. Let's go to components, new file. We're gonna create a register component. All right, so our register component is pretty similar to our login. So we are just gonna copy all of this and let's paste it in here. We're gonna change login to register. And we could change it up here as well. And if we come up here, we're going to use the use state hook. We don't need the use context hook here. We are going to be using the use ref hook. And we're going to be using the use effect hook. Okay. So the use ref is going to be used to create an instance variable. And that's because we're going to use the set timeout method. And the use effect is going to be used to clean up what the set timeout function does. Okay. So we don't need the contact. So let's remove that. Everything else is pretty the same. So let's remove this as well. We don't need the context. We're going to have to create a timer ID. So I'm going to say let timer ID. And we're going to say use ref. And we're just going to set that to null. Okay, next, let's actually use our use effect hook. So I'm going to say use effect. And this is going to take in a callback. We're going to pass an empty array as the second argument. So this only gets called once. And we are going to return a function. So this is equivalent to a component did unmount. 
Okay, so we're just gonna say clear timeout and the timeout is the time ID. So that's all we need the use effect for. And let's add a semicolon here. All right, so now let's move on down to our on submit. So instead of all service login, obviously we're gonna change that to all service register. And the rest should be the same. So we should still be passing in the user. We get the data. Let's remove this for now. And what we're actually gonna do is let's remove all of this for now. Okay, so we get the data back from our server. What I wanna do is pull out the message from that data. Next, what we're gonna do is set the message. So we're gonna update it. So this is from our use state and we're just gonna pass in the message. Next, we're gonna call a function called reset the form. So reset form, and we haven't created this yet, but we will. And next we're gonna check to see if there was any errors. So within the message, we could say, if there is no message error, what we wanna do is actually set a timeout. So this is where our timer ID comes in. So we're gonna say timer ID, and this should be timer ID, not time ID, timer ID. So timer ID is gonna be equal to set timeout. And we're gonna pass a callback. And if there is no error, what we're gonna do is we want to go to the login page. So that means that they successfully created a user and we want them to log in now. And we're gonna have a timeout of let's say two seconds, okay? So the idea behind the timeout is we wanna show the message to the user. And then after we show the message for two seconds, then we go to the login page if there is no error. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Let's, we actually don't need to prevent the default for an on change. So I'll probably have to fix that. Um, we'll get rid of the printout for now. Let's go back to login and we can remove all this and we'll save this. And now let's create our reset form. So I'm gonna say cons reset form. And this is just a simple function that's gonna reset the state of the user. So we're gonna say set user. And again, this is from our use state and we are gonna just reset it. So username is gonna be empty and password is gonna be empty. And just for good measure, we'll set the role to empty. Okay, so this looks good so far. Instead of saying, please sign in, let's say, please register. And instead of the button saying login, let's change that to register. Okay, so this looks good for now. Let's actually go to our app.js and let's create a register route. So we're gonna create a new route and we're gonna give it a path of register. And a component that we wanna render is register. Okay, and let's also import this. So import register from component slash register. All right, so now let's actually see Oh, this is coming out. So we have a register. Let's make Bob one, two, three, four, and we'll give it a password. Okay, so we're getting an error. So let's F12 it says 500 error. And 
think it's because we forgot to specify the role. So yeah, there's a difference between the login and the register. The login, our user, we just have to provide the username and password for login. For a register, we also should have to provide the role. So let's come up here and we'll set the role to empty. And we should also actually create a field for row. So let's come down here. Let's go to copy all of this. Let's paste it. And we'll say that this is for role. Let's change this to row. Type, this could be text. And the name will give it row. Okay, and for our placeholder, we'll say enter row. And we'll say admin or a user. So these are the two rows that we have for our setup right now. And this should work now, but let's give it a try. So we have our form. We want to register Bob. I'll say Bob1234 password and let's say that he is a user so let's register account successfully created and you can see that after the two seconds it takes us to our login page so now let's actually test the login page so we successfully created bob1234 let's sign in and there you go. You can see that it took us to to do's. Now we haven't set up our to do's component, which is why we're blank. But if we hit F12, let's see if we can go to application. And there you go. So our login is working perfectly fine. You can see that it's set the access token within our browser. So it's in within our cookies access token and this is the jwt token right here so this is pretty much what i wanted to end with this tutorial and we can actually test to see if the logout works remember we did the logout for our navbar component and if we go to application you can see that it actually cleared the JWT token. So at least that works for our navbar component as well. So everything's working as intended. And we did the login and register and that's pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial. So I'll see you guys in the next one.